My name is Ted Berger. I'm a, a David Packard Professor of Engineering and a Professor of Neuroscience and Biomedical Engineering at the University of Southern California. I think that this is a, a global, this uh, GF 2045 meeting is going to be a terrific meeting that will raise some of the most essential issues that need to be raised for the future of humanity. Uh, I would invite everyone who can come to come and uh, participate, be part of this process, and uh, come and, and with your very presence, then raise the importance of these issues so that they can be uh, uh, recreated and, and, and moved forward as a, as a new set of solutions uh, for all of us. Well, I think it's quite reasonable to think about uh, several parts of the brain uh, being understood well enough that we can uh, develop not just mathematical models, but uh, silicon models, microchip models, of how those parts of the brain work. We've uh, learned enough about how, of, of what long-term memories are when they're in code, that we can identify long-term memory codes in the behaving rat brain. And so we can say, oh, there, right there, that is the code for uh, the, the bar that the animal is going, going to press to get water. We can say that's the code. And so we can recognize these things, we can see what they are, we can manipulate them in some ways. And uh, so within a, a, a couple of years, um, we will have the ability to form uh, new long-term memories the same way they're formed in the brain. But there are several parts of the brain like this that are ready for uh, this uh, next generation analysis that will allow us to, to um, uh, create a mathematical model of how uh, some of their functions work and we'll be able to reproduce those uh, in mathematical models and we'll be able to reproduce those in um, uh, microchip form. Well, we need to sit down and commit ourselves to, the, to goals, to these kind of goals. I mean, there's, there's every reason to determine, to develop a set of uh, concepts, a set of um, procedures, a set of, of uh, um, uh, you know, surgical procedures um, to, uh, to, to reach this, this kind of uh, um, uh, biomimetic replacement of brain parts. That's what we're talking about, is a biomimetic replacement of brain parts. And we need to commit ourselves to that as a goal. It's going to happen, and we need to find a way to develop the um, to develop this kind of commitment. And the the Congress that we're talking about is a wonderful way to uh, to do this. And that Congress that's that is being organized for uh, 2045 for for June this June uh, in 2013 is a wonderful uh, step in that direction. But we need we need more than that, and. Um, and, I, th and the, I think that the, the sort of key factors uh, after that uh, that are needed are a, 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 an acceptance, I'm going to call it this, an acceptance of the fact that, that, uh, that these experiments need to be done in humans. That there's no reason why some of these uh, experiments can't be done and can't be done readily uh, in a human context. And, uh, and it's uh, most of us have a, a sense that there's uh, that there's something sacred about the human and the human brain, and, and that it's something that's not to be um, uh, touched. We need to be, be careful about it. But it's uh, but I think that that that, uh, that there are a lot of uh, tests, there are a lot of investigations that can be done readily right now with. Uh, patients, uh, heartfelt consent, uh, a lot of patients would uh, love to have, uh, to be part of something that, that really increases the level of our understanding of the brain, and they'd like to uh, share their body and their brain in that process. I think we need to, we need to recruit the, the human, the, the clinical involvement, the, uh, the patient, the public, uh, involvement is something that that's necessary, and I think it's it's underused. We really need to go out there and get some of the get the public behind this, and then um, uh, we need to get more involvement of uh, of, of uh, small businesses and startup companies in the in 
these efforts at the right time, but they could be a, a source of funds for, um, uh, for faster development of, of these biomimetic models that, uh, that we will use to replace uh, brain parts. We are uh, you know, living longer and longer, and so more and more of, the, uh, of these uh, diseases of the brain and degenerative or accidental damages to the brain are going to be seen and, and must be dealt with. And so having a, having a strategy where we, where we uh, think about which brain parts can be replaced uh, for and in the context of which ones uh, are damaged more often or more frequently is just a wise thing to do. Uh, we're just talking about facing reality but getting uh, academic and business and government uh, um, forces together to recognize this reality. It can be done. And as we understand uh, the sophisticated computations, the sophisticated representations that are involved in thought processes, as we understand them more and more, uh, the, the, the possibility of, uh, of, of passing that capability on to a non-human, a, a non-living substrate is uh, becomes very real and I think that will definitely be the next step for this and uh, it'll become part of the process because uh, because how else do we how else do we take the sophisticated uh, thoughts the sophisticated uh, um, representations that are created in in any part of the brain for even a few seconds how do we take that and represent it in such a way that we can have those same, those same calculations you know, be used in the context of repairing the brain. You have to move to an in silicon uh, representation of those capabilities because otherwise uh, you'll be asking patients to carry around uh, several computers behind them on wheels. It doesn't work. And so uh, transferring this kind of understanding to uh, to a, a silicon base will will naturally evolve from uh, from the first step, and I think it'll be it'll be so exciting at that point that there'll be a new a new movement, uh, a sort of a, a new uh, enthusiasm that'll come from a, a non-medical area, a non-medical uh, rationale for completing these kinds of experiments. We can work for a very long time, and that, that we need evolution over a very long time before we find solutions particularly to how to be a better human being and I'd like to be able to have an avatar that allows me to create those optimal uh, uh, values. That's what I'm looking for. I think this uh, letter is really terrific. I think it's, uh, it's, it takes a position that's very important and it creates a, a, well, it's a powerful position. It makes a demand at a scale which is a needed scale that has a world venue, which is really important. It, it identifies the, some of the clear uh, weaknesses or shortcomings of the international and national policies that we have and of just the, the directions in which, uh, the directions which are encouraged by, or just allowed to develop uh, by uh, humanity. We need a new, we need a new vision, we need a new direction, and uh, Global Future 2045 captures that, that need. And I, hopefully in the, in the context of the, of this next GF 2045, this next Congress, we will uh, be able to put even more of the pieces together that will define the directions in which we have to move for the solutions of these kind of global, global problems.